Hey, what's up? This is Appleseed here. Techwear has many aesthetic and stylistic connections to popular culture in ways where one can inspire the other. This is in things like films like Blade Runner, for example, science fiction and near future fiction, things like a lot of William Gibson's books, and there's countless other examples as well. The world of video games also has a big part to play here. You've got science fiction themes, dystopian reality, cyberpunk universes, all these kinds of things show up fairly frequently and make up some of Techware's source material. Let's take a look at a few interesting examples of technical fashion showing up in game worlds and instances where video games can inspire Techware in the real world. Now I bet you think this video is going to be all about watchdogs because they're all edgy hacker dudes and they all wear face masks and they all talk about how they're going to destroy the government. And although the world of watchdogs does bring up some interesting themes about our relationship with technology in those kinds of near future Future scenarios. If you look at the kind of things that all these guys are wearing, often it's not really anything to do with tech wear at all. You'll find a lot more um, kind of punk type influences, I think, and just regular clothing to be honest, but with added face masks. Often you won't really see that much in the way of technical performance clothing uh, on your watchdog's character. You could argue, of course, that face coverings have a technical function and that they're designed to uh, maintain your anonymity and prevent cameras and stuff for capturing you. But the thing is, if you're wearing stuff like that in the real world, then all it's going to do is make you stand out more because you just become that guy over there wearing the face mask. It doesn't really help you blend in. So what else have we got here? I think the world of Mirror's Edge is quite an interesting one and definitely worth thinking about. Like Watch Dogs, it's a bit of a near future type scenario, one with a lot of technology and where surveillance is very much a high priority. But in Watch Dogs, where your character is kind of manipulating technology, um, Mirror's Edge has a bit more of a rejection of that and instead sees your character avoiding all kinds of technology in favour of just jumping around on rooftops. And at face value it might seem like Techware embraces technology a bit better because you do have so many things like dedicated phone pockets, magnetic strips for headphones, just general things designed with gadgets in mind. Clothing in Mirror's Edge is all about navigating urban environments in a quick and efficient way, in a way that's very adaptable to the particular situation that you're in. But for me that's one of the core things about Techware, about having this gear which is designed for urban environments but also very adaptable, stuff that you can wear in loads of different situations as you navigate that urban space. And while of course in Mirror's Edge it does go too far over the parkour spectrum in a way that most real life techwear enthusiasts are not really going to do, but Mirror's Edge presents a very cool, a very crisp world with a very strong near future aesthetic and presents characters whose aim is to navigate that urban space in an interesting and a cool way. And from memory, the bad dudes have some pretty cool looking armor and clothing and stuff as well. And I think even the civilians have some quite nice, mildly futuristic, sort of almost valence inspired pieces going on. But for me, the most interesting example of techware and video games and that relationship between the two comes from Deus Ex. Again, we're presented with a near future, very urban environment in a way which brands like Arcteryx Valence, as I mentioned, acronym are going to feel very, very at home. In a world full of cybernetic enhancements which are designed to improve human adaptability and utility, it's very easy to see how the clothing that they wear could mirror that, both from technically advanced materials and very adaptable clothing with a kind of clean or a futuristic edge to it. The culture then of biomechanics and about making the human form as useful and as adaptable as possible means that techwear in this game is not just a costume that the characters are wearing, but just naturally the most appropriate thing for them to be wearing. But if we look at the most recent game of Mankind Divided, you'll see that this relationship starts coming into the real world and starts working both ways. And that is because Acronym played a consulting role in the clothing for this film. So this wasn't just game designers thinking about what gear would look most appropriate in their game world, but actually real world designers who produce technical clothing being asked to work out effectively what the most appropriate technical gear for these characters in the game world would wear. And I think that legitimizes both Acronym as a brand and Mankind Divided as a game world, in that Acronym is considered the most appropriate choice to feature within this game world about near futurism and about this kind of technical performance and cybernetic enhancement and such. 
And at the same time, this unreal near future world is not just taking inspiration, but directly taking from something which exists in the real world, which we know to be associated with futuristic and technical fashion. And that relationship is punctuated by the fact that Errolson Hugh himself shows up in the game in email form. If you look at a particular computer, you'll find an email from Acronym uh, asking Adam Jensen, who's the main character of Mankind Divided, if he likes the coat that's been made for him, which, of course, is an acronym coat. And an acronym coat by name does actually appear in the game. Now, you might think that's pretty much peak tech wear. Acronym coat showing up in cool, near-future, dystopian-y, cyberpunk -y type game. But it actually gets a little bit deeper from there, in that Acronym produced real-life prototypes of this jacket in order to make sure that it would be exactly the right thing for Adam Jensen, and that all these different features that they were designing for Adam Jensen's cybernetic enhancements would actually make sense and would work if it was created in real life. That's super cool, obviously, and it shows that the clothing which is in the game actually bears a very strong resemblance to stuff that you might find in real life, even if Acronym never produced this specific coat. However, there is one stage further to this fun little techwear adventure that we're currently going on, and that is that um, that jacket, which Acronym never made but is available in the game, is actually available under another name. A company called Muster Brand, presumably with the blessing of Acronym, produce an officially licensed Deus Ex coat that is worn by Adam Jensen, which of course is designed and created in real life by Acronym. So now you have a very strange situation where a real life coat has been made to give to a video game character, which is then recreated and made into another real life coat which people can actually buy and wear. That very wrapped up link of inspiration and replication between the real world and the video game one definitely suggests to me that the world of Deus Ex is definitely one which takes some inspiration from techware and conversely, techware can take some inspiration from this game world. I don't really know how common knowledge that direct relationship between Acronym and Deus Ex is, so hopefully that was some interesting little bits of information that you didn't really know. I certainly had never heard of any of that stuff. Uh, when Mankind Divided actually came out. It was only stuff that I found out about later. I only really covered a few different games here because I wanted to go a bit more in depth with Deus Ex specifically. Um, but of course, there are loads of cool game worlds out there that can take inspiration from techware and vice versa, of course. So do stick those down in the comments if you've got any thoughts or if you've played any cool games recently which have that kind of dystopian or cyberpunk or near future kind of theme to it. Um, because they're definitely worth playing, I think. There's loads of cool games out there. And that is everything, so if you enjoyed this quick little trip through the world of video games, then please do give it a like, and thank you so much for watching, and of course, I will see you next week in the next video. Shout out to William H, that is a very good question. Uh, in terms of footwear, because this comment was on the Downtown Air Force One video, um, there are lots of things that I think have the aesthetic, but not necessarily the performance. So you've got loads of Y3 shoes, loads of mainline Adidas stuff as well, actually. And there's some cool Nike options as well, like the Presto, like the Pocket Knife, I think has a pretty cool like tech-inspired look. There's the Footscape Utility DM, which I think is pretty cool, but I never managed to pick up, and a bunch of kind of sneaker boot type things as well. And and shout out to, what is that, a triangle? Yeah, CP Company fits pretty much the same as Stone Island, so I would always go one size up. I would normally buy a large in jumpers, but that CP Company one was an XL, and it fits like, it's kind of slim, but I think it fits well. And shout out Phantoms also, I think kind of like tech where Rick Owens definitely demands a certain aesthetic, so you really have to invest quite a lot in it, and when every piece of Rick Owens is so expensive, it is quite hard to do that. So yeah, I would love to pick up some Rick Owens stuff, but I just feel like you kind of have to get almost more than one piece at once so that you can really like do the whole Rick thing. Um, and I just don't have the cash, basically. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see some more, hopefully I'll continue the trend of remembering to put the video links up there. And if you haven't subscribed, but you got all the way to the end of this video, then you should consider subscribing. You can just hit that little button there and then you can do that. You'll be subscribed forever. And then next week and all the future weeks when I upload new videos, then you can check those out.